Thomas here with Much Profs, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am building something from a relatively new video game. I was talking with my younger brother a few days ago and he was giving me some ideas for potential builds. We do this from time to time. He's a very avid gamer. He goes by Absurd and Aloof on Twitch and was talking to me about this new game that's kind of like Pokemon but with guns. And I thought it sounded like a pretty cool premise, a big open world where you can create your own little towns and fight these little characters. So why not um, build something from it? So the video game is Pal World. And I was looking through some of the character designs and really kind of honed in on a character named Lamb Ball, which is a lamb that's kind of a little fluffy fat thing in the shape of a ball. And I thought, that's what I'm gonna build. So today we are making Lamb Ball from Pow World out of polymer clay and a few other materials. Let's get to building. So my younger brother got me this cool little set of display containers for Christmas, saying that he thought I could use them for some build. So here is one of the three in the set that I will use. I am keeping this close by so I know what the limitation is of how big my lamb ball should be. I roll up a small ball of foil and compact it a little bit by hitting it with the scissors. Then after kneading my polymer clay for a few minutes, I then roll it out into a sheet and wrap it around the foil ball. I preheat my oven to 275 degrees like the box says and cook my starter ball for 15 minutes. Once the ball has cooled down, I sand over the surface quickly with some rough sandpaper. I even out a small portion that will act as the face area that won't get any clay added to it. The rest is going to get layers of lumps for the clay fluff. In order to get the uncooked clay to stick to the cooked clay, I spread on a layer of bake-on adhesive specific for polymer clay. This will be how I add details without having to worry about squishing my base form. I put on some gloves to limit the amount of fingerprints I leave on the surface and get to work. I have a bag full of clay sculpting tools just off screen, but I primarily use my hand to shape and form most of the pieces that go onto my Ball. Once done, it goes back into the oven for another 15 minutes.
Lamb Ball has arms, legs, flappy ears, and two horns that protrude out of his body. I'm just going to drill a couple of holes spaced out around the middle of his body and insert some armature wire to sculpt these features onto. All these appendages are basically little rolled up sausages or flat breakfast patties. I prefer the latter. The wire will help support the extensions for the character and make it super sturdy. I use more of that bacon adhesive to both the wire and the area where the unbaked clay meets the cooked clay to ensure a good bond. Then it's back into the oven for a third and final bake. Two coats of gray primer spray paint and a light mist of white spray paint at an above angle. As I wait for the little fluffy butt to dry, I guess I can go ahead and work on the base for him to sit on. I figure a nice simple field of grass would be good. Keep it simple. I put the blue painter's tape down and trace the rim on the inside of the display case to quickly get a size for how big my sod hockey puck should be. I put it on some 24 millimeter EVA foam and roughly cut it out. I add some jaggedness to the sides of the cylinder to add some texture to it before I spread on my materials. Instead of painting this first, I decided just to lay down some Mod Podge and glue stuff on it. To make it look like actual dirt, I went outside and got some dirt. Made sense to me. The most realistic looking dirt you can get is dirt. I dried it off a little bit with my heat gun and used a salsa bowl that we will not mention to my wife. Let's keep that between us. I spread on the Mod Podge, sprinkled on the dirt, and dry it quickly with a heat gun. To lock in all the particles that are loose on the top, I spray on some watered down Mod Podge that's in a little spray bottle.
Now, I don't know why, but my camera cut off for some reason while I was adding static grass and while I was adding the miniature leaves. So you can kind of see where it started to record here. The static allows the blades of grass to stick up and look more realistic. Once it is all on, I spray it down with another layer of that watered down Mod Podge to seal all the loose stuff into place. Now I'm ready to move to painting my lamb ball. I did it all by hand with light buildups of layers. First, I laid down a layer of yellow in the cracks of the fluff to make it stand out a little bit more. And then it was just a matter of adding white to that yellowness and slightly dabbing it on in a couple of passes. I did the same thing with the lamb's skin and his horns. He has two little jewels on his stomach that I just cut out of some orange glue sticks to fit in the recesses. I'll paint them later with some gold paint. I had some small reflective half dome jewels that I'm going to use for his eyes. Those get super glued into place as well. I did sand down a small little flat section before I primed the sculpt so the gems would sit flat on that surface. As far as the nose and the mouth, I just painted those on. After I finished painting everything, I I thought the base, the sod puck, and the lamb had a little too much brown, so to give it a little bit more contrast, I eventually painted the wood base black. My pal world pal would not be happy without a weapon. So I found this little helicopter soldier force set at the dollar store that had a nice little gun in it. I plucked it out, hit the metal parts with some silver rub and buff, and gave him his much needed accessory. I left it as well as lamb ball loose so that I could display something else or maybe add or take away from this if I wanted to. And with that, the build is done. I hope you enjoyed this dive into pal world 
and this nugget of a character known as Lambo. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I realize with the glass, it's gonna be hard to see. So let me pull that off. Uh, overall, not too bad. I didn't glue him to the base, nor did I glue the gun to him because I wanted it to be something that could be repositioned or pulled out. Or if you wanted to swap it with something else, this would be a cool base to go off of, but yeah. Maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull something from a video game that's relative to do and make something that you have no absolute idea about, but you still like making stuff and you think that the process is fun and it's more important than the actual thing that you make. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. I think it's time to set this little guy free and let him um, capture me some Pal World characters. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please join these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.